a quick review on what we talked about before. We created a, we created the parallel array. We went through all the things that we created. Then we uh, uh, found out that we can actually break down the process of uh, uh, the process that we have into pieces and create functions. We talked about functions. We showed functions are individual programs of their own. These functions have two, uh, a point of entry and a point of exit. A point of entry is where we feed the function with the information <clears throat> it requires to do its task. And after it's done, it can return only one thing out. No, two, only one thing. A function can receive nothing and return nothing. That's fine. A function can receive many things and return nothing. That's fine. A function can receive nothing and return only one thing, that is fine. So <clears throat> the, num the, um, the number of entry of things that you can pass through a function can be, can be zero or many. The number of things that you can return from a function is zero or one. Not the number zero or one, it's the number of things that you can return out. Um, we mentioned, and I see that I left it awfully like that, that when you are creating a, a function, uh, you don't want to have uh, the functions lying around one page so you, in one uh, file. So that's why you create separate files. And in those separate files, you put your functions, but bring the prototypes into the caller function so the compiler is aware, is, will be aware of existence of the function. The prototypes that we created with the types that we put for the entry of the <clears throat> arguments of the func ar argument of the function, we said that type only is enough, and I removed it, and I said it's a very bad thing, don't do that, and I still left it that way. Always put values over here. It doesn't have to match what you are having in your function. It's better to be something meaningful. So int length, for example, and character over here, I'm going to say fill, which means it's going to create, and divider is not a good name, let me change that. So I'll change divide, oh. I'll change divider to, uh, let's call it a line. I'm drawing a line. Uh, entire solution, change everything, yes. Okay, so they're all changed. So the function line over here has a length and it's filled with whatever. So it actually draw, draws it with the fill character. So if the character is asterisk, it draws the line with asterisks with that length. So it actually tells the person who's looking at it how the function is working. We created the get int function. And instead of scanning and put a, a foolproof function, get int, and instead of having a scanner for number of marks, we called get int. Essentially, what get int does, it receives uh, uh, the integer from the user, but just to make sure it receives one character more and checks that one character extra. If that one character extra is new line, it means user actually entered the proper integer. If the user enters anything other than an integer, that character afterwards will pick up anything other than backslash and new line. And through that, we find out that user did not enter the thing properly. We flush the keyboard by reading everything until we hit the new line, and then we ask the user to enter it again. And that was the foolproof integer entry that we have done. And through that, user cannot enter anything but a valid integer. We use that function in here to get the marks, but we didn't use it for uh, the uh, as for number of marks, but we didn't get it for the student number or uh, the, uh, the mark of the student. So we're going to change that right now. So in here, I'm going to have uh, uh, percent D as uh, uh, the, the row of entry, and then I'm going to say printf um, uh, student number. And Instead of having the student number as a scanf that can be mistaken, uh, can be entered incorrectly, I'm going to use get int for it. And I'm going to use the exact same thing for the counter. So I'm going to say printf uh, mark. And I'm going to get the student mark for that. So it's going to be 
Mark's counter set to get int. That's the final thing that we haven't done last time. So we do that. Now everything that is entered in here in foolproof is, which means no matter how the, the, the user of the, of the program tries to put something uh, garbage, it won't accept it. It only accepts a proper integer. So I'm going to put three, and it works for a student number. If I put garbage, it won't accept it. Now if I put an integer, it actually accepts. The same thing for mark garbage, it won't accept. And no matter how many times you do that, it won't accept until you actually enter something that is valid. Now it goes to the next one. And next one. And then it prints the report. And uh, looks like it's working properly. So that's the review of what we have done last time. OK? Now, today we're going to learn first how we can actually organize this better. OK? So um, instead of, uh, I'm, I'm going to call the functions properly because I want to change it actually to an application now. I want this thing to be a nicely designed proper application by end of today. So I want the name of the files to be proper. Now, Analyzer functions, I'm not going to write analyzer functions. I'm just going to write analyzer.c over there. So I'm going to rename that to analyzer.c. OK. And the program that I'm writing, it's an analyzer application, correct? Analyzer app, I'll call it. So that becomes my main. Analyzer app, analyzer C. Now, if I look at the analyzer.c over here, I'll see that really the only thing over here that is related directly to analysis is the function title. The rest of the functions that you see over here have nothing to do with the analyzer program. They can be used with any other function any other program, correct? So it's not a good idea to put it in here. I'm going to take these out and put it in another. I'm going to take these out and put it in another function, uh, another uh, file. I'll call it utilities. And utilities will not have a title because it's not related to it. But line, flush keyboard, and get int is going to be in there. And I'm going to add that one to my project. And I'm going to make sure, so Analyzer doesn't have the title. Sorry, Utilities doesn't have the title. And Analyzer will not have any of these functions and only the title. Don't worry, lots of functions are going to get added to this as we go through it. So that's the only thing that is really related to the Analyzer program that we have, the Analyzer app. The other ones are all utilities that I'm using. Now, as we go and continue working with stuff like this, general functions that needs, helps you to do uh, user input and out, user in, input and output, do I.O. stuff, they get more and more, and it's going to be added to the utilities. So the time comes that you will literally not be able to type all the prototypes every single time. It takes a long time. There's a solution for that. There is a way that you can put all the prototypes in a function, uh, sorry, all the prototypes in a file and ask the compiler to bring that file in when you are actually using utilities. So instead of actually having the prototypes written one by one by one, what you are going to do is this. So you're going to actually create for each module that you have, you're going to create what we call a header file. OK? So for utilities, and as you see, I'm going to go actually in here and say, oh, not that, not that. I'm going to go over here and say, add a new item. Now I'm going to add over here utilities.h. 
and then I'm going to add another one. Analyzer.h. I know I only have one function in it, but hey, I want to be, uh, I want to write the, the code in a proper way. So I'm going to go to my analyzer app and get the prototypes, take them off. In utilities, I'm going to put the, tire, the, the line, the get int. In analyzer, I'm going to put only the title. But of course, utilities has one more function that I forgot to put because it wasn't needed. That's flush keyboard. I'm going to put it in here too. So now I have two header files and three C files. So I'll go to an analyzer app in here. And I'm going to say include. Instead of less than and greater than, I'll put double quote analyzer.h. And make sure I have include utilities.h. OK? Double quote, it's, it means mine. It means it's in this directory. Less than and greater than, it means go to the compiler's include directory and pick it from there. If you want to know where it is, this is where all the header files are at. So when you put less than and greater than, it actually goes to, uh, is it here? Uh, Visual C. There you go. These are your header files. These are all the header files that you can add. Okay? So when you actually say include, it goes less than and greater than, it goes here. When you put double code, it means I'm going to tell you where the path is. And when you don't put anything, it means right here. Okay? So it's going to pick it up right from there. And what does include do? And what I'm going to tell you is not, I'm not trying to. Uh, tell you that what does it look like? It's exactly this. When you write include, C language literally goes, copies the content of that file, and pastes it and replaces it with that line. Literally. That's what it does. So it literally goes into that file, picks up those prototypes that you put, removes the include, and pastes it instead. Cut, copies and pastes the information in here. There, therefore, you don't need to do it again. That's all. So the other include that you did for standard input output, that's what it does. It goes to standard input output, gets all the prototypes of standard input output header file, and pastes it right at the top of your code. All right? Are we OK with this? Yes. Oh, when we put include, this extension is H. Standard says yes. I have to show you something. Let me pause the. Okay, good thing that nobody will see that include thingy of mine. All right, so now we are here. Thank you very much for reminding me to, re to resume. So, and if that didn't go on YouTube, so <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> All right, so um, now if I look at that get in thingy, that's, and, and if actually they enter 150, they can pass the limit of our array and crash our program. It is not between 0 and 100. They put 952, or student number has a certain limit. So it's not good. <clears throat> what I can do, now that I have the thing separated, I can actually think about it separately. So I can go into the utilities thingy and say, OK, forget about what I'm writing. I'm not writing a program about analysis and, analysis and marks. I'm just, my task is to write a program that gets an integer from the user with boundaries, validates an integer. just doesn't get an integer, it validates the, the limits. And you have done this already in your temperature thingy. It was between minus 40 and positive 40. 
and it was a very simple program. So why don't I write it? It's easy. I'm just going to say I want a, pro a function that returns an integer for me. The name is get valid int. So it gets a validated integer, and it's going to be between a minimum value and the maximum value that I'm going to give it to it. As you remember, I said you can give as many information as you want to a function, but it only returns one thing to you, correct? Now I'm going to get the integer. I'm going to say, OK, I have an integer that I want to get, int num. Immediately, I'm going to say it's equal to get int. I already wrote a program that gets a foolproof integer. It was just not validated, right? So I'm going to reuse my code. So this is going to get an integer, foolproof integer, guaranteed that it's an integer, puts it in num. Now I have to make sure that that value is between min and max. That's cheesy. We've done it two weeks ago. So I have to say while that number is less than min or number is greater than max, I have to sh show a message. I'm going to say printf, what do I say? Invalid integer, not invalid integer. Invalid value, that's better. Invalid value. Then because I'm talking to a person, I want them to know what is the valid value limit between the two, I'm going to actually print a message saying percent %d should be value should be greater than that value and less than this value. And I'm going to, and I'm going to show the minimum and max, min and max. So after they make a mistake, if they enter something properly, good. If not, they're going to actually see what is a valid value. So the second time they are entering it in a proper way. Now I'm going to say num is get is equal to get int again. Do I need to flush the keyboard? Clear things? No, because get int is taking care of all that. I don't need to worry about that. And then after everything's done, return it. Reusing code is heaven. Look, what? One, two, three lines of code. Done. Now what I can do, I can actually add this thing to the header file I have. Copy that to the utilities.h. So it's actually one more thing that it can do. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to my analyzer app, and now I can actually write something proper. So I'm going to say, OK, number of marks, if it's less than three, use a paper, for heaven's sake, while you're running a program. So three is minimum, OK? Maximum, 100. If it's more than 100, I can't do it. My array is 100, 100 integers. That's that. And it's not get int, it's get valid int. Now, next one over here. For a student number, again, get valid int. And student number is nine characters, right? No, no. It's eight or nine because we have zero, four, two, nine, or one, nine, something, something, right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, uh, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the smallest value. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's the biggest value that I can have for a student number. There you go. That's my student number. And for marks, zero to 100. OK? And that's get valid int again. OK? And now if I run the program, the program is not only foolproof with respect to a valid integer value. So if I do like that, it says invalid integer, pro, uh, try again. But if I put 2,000 over here, 20,000, it's going to say invalid value, values. So the first one is get int doing its work. The second one is get valid int doing its validation. Are we OK? And now I have uh, a very smart and nice program to do all the stuff that I want to do. Student number is getting entered. Everything's getting, uh, so student number, if I put something small, it won't accept it. But if I put something that is uh, a proper size, it's, it's going to accept it. I'm not going to go through the rest. You know it works. Are we OK with this? So now, if I want to compile this code, the compilation will be analyzer 
Analyzer.c, Analyzer App.c, Utilities.c. And everybody should be able to answer to me now. Do I need to put .h files in compilation? No, because it gets copied and pasted in my code. That's why you never put .h's in your compilation code, because compiler already adds them using the includes that you have. And that's how you compile it. And then the name of the thing is going to be analyzer. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Are we good? All right. What is a string? That? That? An array of, an array of characters that? That, no, no, that, that's an array of characters. A string is an array of, is an array of characters with one additional thing, that is? Yeah, perfect, but be loud, my friend. Terminate, terminate, be loud, okay? Terminate, because it's an array of characters that is terminated by zero. That's a very important fact. Don't forget that, okay? That's what makes a string a string. Otherwise, it's just a carrier array of characters, right? Are we okay? All right. When I'm writing a program, let me just. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have twelve people over here sitting, correct? Right? Twelve people, which means I have twelve people. Do I need to, if I want to have twelve people, do I create an array of twelve heads and an array of twenty-four arms and another array of twenty-four arms? And then it's not like that. When you deal with things, they are not parallel arrays. Nothing in, is parallel array in the word. When I have four people, four eyes are coming through. That's because that's how it is. That's how it works. Everything is packaged into little things, and you create an array of packages. When I have four tables, I have 16 legs. If they are four-legged tables, of course. This one has actually two, I think. So, <laughs> but that's how it is, OK? So we have to remember this, that parallel arrays, really in real world, they don't exist, OK? And it, we have to learn somehow, instead of having separate a student in marks and student number, for a student, we have to package 100 students. And each student must have a student number, a mark, maybe a name, right? How do we package things in C language? To package, to create, it's actually creating a new type. This packaging, it's actually creating a new type. You have types in C language that you already know. Int, double, and they cannot be broken down into smaller types. If you say a double, a double is a double. Its size may change, the maximum and minimum. If you say a float, a float is a float. You cannot change it to, I cannot break a double into two floats. I cannot break a long integer into two shorts. I can't do that. They are, whole, they are the smallest thing that they are. But you can create custom types. I can create That's mathematics. I don't want to go mathematics. Um, something simple and easy. I can create uh, an entity, call it an, a shopping item, an item that you go to grocery store and buy it, that it has two, and two properties. One is the UPC code, the one that they beep, the UPC SKU code, whatever you call it. And the other one is the price of the thing. 
okay? Price of the item. Now, some of the items are taxed and not, right? So I can say item has three things. It has a UPC, it has a price, and it has an integer that is zero or one that tells if it's taxed or not. When I create an array of 100 items, each one have its own price, its own UPC, its own uh, flag to be taxed or not. Are we okay with that? How do we do that? This is how we do it. So, because it's a new type that you are creating, usually these types, you put them in header files. Because if you want to carry it from one program to another, you need to bring the type. This is the type that you made. It's a custom type. You made it by yourself. It's not a type that is created by the compiler that is available everywhere. Because of that, you need to put it in a header file so you can include it anywhere you want. Are we okay with this? There is another fact that I have to mention. Um, anybody knows what is abstract art? What does it mean, abstract? Okay, forget it. Okay. Uh, if you're a mechanic, what is a car to you? If you're a mechanic, what is a car to you? It's something that you repair, correct? It has a make and a model, and it has a specification of the engine that you want to deal with, and all this stuff, right? If you are a driver, what is a car to you? It's a steering wheel, gas, and a pedal, and a, and a... So the same thing can have different types of meaning depending on who is using it. When I create a student over here, that's the student that fits my needs. That's my abstraction a student. Okay? Remember that you cannot have an absolute definition of something in a program. It's impossible because there are just too many things. I'm a teacher. I'm teaching to you. Do you care how do I dance? Or I'm bald or not? You don't care. You want me to teach. You want to know if I have the knowledge of the language and if I can express that knowledge to you. That's what's important. That's what a teacher is to you. If you are going to a dancing class, your partner, you don't give rats behind if that person knows C language or not. You want to know if the guy can dance. Correct? That's what it is. So depending on what you are doing, the abstraction of things that you design is different. Please keep that in mind when we are making this package. Ah. So I want to create a package. I can create it right over here to show you what's going on, but I want to do it properly. So I'm going to do it in, an, in analyzer.h because this is supposed to be a, to, in, in analyzer program is supposed to use it. I'll put it in there. Uh, let's split the screen. Um, people at the back, can you see that or it's too small? Is it better? Can you see it? Okay. So, <clears throat> to create a package, we use uh, uh, a data system called structure. Okay? So, when you say structure, you're essentially creating a new data type, a custom data type made of smaller types. Okay? So, I'm saying struct. What should we call it? It's student mark, right? So, I'm going to call it student mark, all right? You open a curly bracket, close a curly bracket, and that's where you put all the stuff. Now, what do I want a, st a student to have? I want it to have a, a student has a student number, right? Int student number, voila, that's one. I want a student to have a mark because it's a student mark, so I'm gonna say int mark, voila. I can even add one more thing. Let's add the student's name. We couldn't do palette or names because a name was an array already. I couldn't have an array of an array. It was beyond my pay grade. 
So I don't want to do that. I can put it in here. Just put it in a package. So in here, I'm going to say character name. How big a name of a, of a person can be? 30? 30 characters is good? OK. If the maximum size of the name that I have is 30, what is the array that I'm putting here, size of the array? 31. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. That's amazing. OK. Now I have myself a new type. The name of the type is struct student mark, not student mark. OK? The name of the type is struct student mark. So whenever you want to create an instance of this type, you have to say struct student type. OK? So let's say save. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just, uh, just to show you how, what I mean, I'm going to add a new item. Um, Program that C. Oh, what did I do? What is that? Ugh. Okay, uh, remove, delete, please. Thank you. New item. So in here, I'm going to say include analyzer.h just to show you how we can use a structure. So I'm going to say int main void. return zero. If I want to instantiate, create an instance of that student, I have to. So if you want to create an instance of an integer, what do you write? You write int a, and then you have an integer, right? Correct? I want an instance of student, a struct student mark. I have to write that. Struct student mark. I don't need to worry because I included that one so it knows what it is. And now I'm going to call that, let's say, st. So ST is a student mark, which means it has a student number, it has a mark, and it has a name. How do I access? What is this? It's a microphone, right? Who does it belong to? Fardad. So how do you say it? You say Fardad's microphone, apostrophe S, correct? That's what you do. Apostrophe S in C language is dot, one dot. That's it. So if I want, so ST is a student mark. If I want ST's mark, I'm going to write ST's mark. And I can set that one to three, four, five. That's exact. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is an integer. ST's mark, ST.mark is an integer. It's not a student mark. It's an integer. If I want to access, if I want to put the student number, I go ST student number, and I'm going to set that to whatever I want to do. If I want to set the first letter of the name to F, I'm going to go ST.name0 is set to F because ST name is an array of characters. All right. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. Any problem with that? So, uh, you cannot set the name this way to, uh... No, if you set it, I'm going to come over there and beat you to death. Because I mentioned 55,000 times that st.name, if you want to do this, you can't because assignment is for one thing. Name is how many things? Where is it? No, not there. Name is 31 things. You need 31 assignment operators to set that one to whatever you want. Assignment operators for one thing. Later on at the end of the semester, close to end, you got to learn that there is actually a header file called string.h. And in that string.h, instead of doing foolish thing like this, you go str copy into sd.name for that. Okay? There are functions written to
to do the copying for you because you can't do it by yourself. Okay? So that essentially means set ST name to Farnham. Okay? You're going to learn it three, four weeks from now. Are we okay? But for now, we can get the information from the keyboard. We know how to do it. Scanf does it. Using what? No, Scanf uses what type of placeholder to read a string? Percent? 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 C is character. Percent? Percent S. Percent S prints a string or reads a string. How does it print it? It's a loop inside printf and scanf. It goes one by one and prints them. And scanf reads character by character, places it. They've written the code in it. So when you put a percent %s, you do it. And because of that, scanf is a little freaky when it comes to, to, to strings. When you write scanf, if I, want, if I want to scanf a mark, how do I write it? I write scanf percent %d, and I want to get ST's mark. I know I have to put address. So address of ST's mark. OK? So that address of is, remember I told you this is an integer, not a student? So it means address of mark. Now, scanf, when you want to do a percent %s, you just go ST.name. You don't put an ampersand. Why? Because name is not a single thing. It's 30 things. It needs to have it. It needs to have the address of the beginning of all of them. OK? Are we OK with this? Are we OK? OK? That's how a, that's how a, a, a structure works. How you set a structure, deal with it. If you want to print it, you go printf uh, student number and then you go st dot stno exactly like a regular integer okay just remember that dot is apostrophe s are we okay with this are we okay one are we okay two yes A compiler works in a sequential manner, OK? Which means it has to pass it to know its existence. Otherwise, it won't do it. It's exactly like a function, all right? Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Yes. Can you have arrays of strokes? Of course, you can have an array of anything. We're going to have it right now in three minutes, actually. Are we OK? Are we OK one? All right. So let's close this one. We know how it works. And I'm going to remove it from the project. Actually, let's rename it. Uh, 01struct intro.c. Now let's go back to our analyzer app. <clears throat> I have 100 marks and 100 student numbers, right? Instead of doing that, I'm going to create an array of struct, this auto type thingy of Visual Studio sometimes becomes really annoying. Struct student marks, mark, and I'm going to call it st, and I'm going to put 100, which means I have 100 students, therefore I don't need these. OK? ST zeros mark. ST zeros, student number. ST zeros, now name. I have a name. Woohoo. OK? Are we OK with this? Now, not always you have stuff like this that is parallel and you want to make it like a structure because you want to eliminate a parallel. Right? Sometimes things go together. Things go together. Like, look at these three things, past, fail, just past. What are those? Huh? These are actually passing rates, right? These are passing rates for a mark. You want to see how many, how many passings you have in this and that one, right? Correct? 
So you can actually put them together in a structure. So you can actually go over here and say, hey, I have a, I have a struct passing rate. That's a new version of a struct. Struct passing rate. And you simply pack these three over there. Because it's just, they just go together. They're not supposed to be separate things, right? And for that one, I'm just going to create one variable. It's not an array. I'm going to say struct passing rate. And I'm going to put uh, rate. OK? Now let's modify our program so it works with the structure. First of all, pass, just pass, all these things. You can initialize a structure exactly like an array. But the difference is that the elements are all not the same. So if you have a structure that has an integer and a double and a, and a character string, you actually have to put those. In our case, they are all three integers. We are lucky. So I'm going to just initialize it right here. So I'm going to say passing rate. I'm going to say set to 0, 0, and 0. OK? If I had a student, oh, 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 oh. if I had a student that I wanted to initialize, this would have been it. I had to put first one is an integer, second one is an integer, and third one is a string. OK, you have to follow exactly what inside the structure is and initialize it that way. Are we OK? And if you want to initialize an array of structures, you can always go like this. So this is an array, right? So first you put the array. Then you have to put the elements of the array. And each element is a structure, right? So I'm going to put that one like this over here, the second one like that, and this one I'm going to put 10, and 10, and Fardud. OK? All right? And what happens to the rest? They're all going to get nullified. They're all going to get set to 0. The rules of arrays work for all of them. So ST0 mark will be 0, ST0's Student number will be 0. SD0's name will be Fardat. SD1's mark will be 10. SD1's student number will be 10. SD1's name will be Fardud. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? There is no reason that I did that. Just did that to show you how we do it. So let's come over here. Now, student number counter. We don't want that. We want a student counters student number, right? Marks counter. It's not marks. It's students dot mark. You want me to change that counter to I? Is it too long of a name for a loop counter? Let me change it to CNT. No, not the entire solution, current document. There you go. That's better. OK? So now CNT counts mark will be that one. Sum will be equals to CNT counts mark. All right? Same thing over here. It's comparing the values. They're all going to be uh, SD. Actually, they're all mark, so I'm going to just copy that. So that's the mark. That's the mark. And this just passed. It's rates just passed. And this one is rates passed. And this one is rates failed. 
Are we okay? Why am I getting this? Oh, thank you. And I missed it for all of them for some reason. What did I do? Mark. I thought I copied it. Are we good? For the rest of it, this one, student number. I know it's boring, but they say you learn the most when you are bored. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but hey. ST, again, OST mark. So copy. So that's the mark. The mark. And again, rate. And rate dot just passed. And rate passed, rate dot just passed, and that one. Rate dot failed. And I think we are all done. So nothing has changed in here other than we package the things into, into structures. The program is the same. Everything is exactly the same. No improvement watched over other than it got more organized. Okay? Instead of having three different pieces, I have all set in one. And actually, let me get the, get the name of the student, too. So I'm going to say, uh, actually, I'm going to put it at the beginning. So in here, I'm going to say printf. Uh, name, student name, and I'm going to say scanf percent s, and what do I get? I get stcnt's dot name. Ta-da! Now I have the student names too. Okay, I'm going to print it as a report. For printing as a report, what do I need to do is to add one more thing over here. And it's 30 care 30, so I'm going to go one over here, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Two, three, and one space, so that's 31. And I'm going to say over here, name. Okay. And then come down over here right after that, add a bar and put over here one space percent 30 S. It means in 30 spaces print the S. Also make it left justified because you want the names to be left justified, right? And in here I'm going to put STCNTs uh, name printed. And we are done. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? I'm going to compile and run it and test it. Uh, uh, you can go for a break and come back, and then we're going to continue with the rest. Okay? So let me see if it works properly. Oh, scan if undefined. Any header file that you have must have its... Oh, oh. why? I thought I removed it. Remove. Okay, that's better. Okay. So three. Student name Farda. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Frank, uh, student number 2342342342, Mark 78, student name Fred, and 345, and 56. That looks good. Oh, those lines, they have to be 32 characters longer. So I gotta fix that. The rest looks aligned and everything looks good. So the line 
32, that's 63. 63, and I have a 63 over here too. Save. Pause recording. All right. 2% for the test. Add it. <laughs> Remind me. All right. So let's make things a little more organized, OK? Uh, so OK. So uh, what I wanted to say. See, I got distracted. What I was saying. Oh, so uh, we want to, we want to make this thing a little more organized. First of all, the format is not like this. I'm going to remove it. So I'm just going to say that's the data entry because there's no format. It's going to, it's foolproof. It's going to tell them how things are done. Now. What's this? What's happening here in these few lines, three lines? What's we are answered? What happens over there, my friend? What are those highlighted lines doing? So it's essentially getting all the student information, right? So if all of, if that thing is getting student information, and let's see what are the things that it has. So it actually, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So it gets the student information. And what are the entities? What are the things that it's involved with? It's a student mark. A student mark is only a student mark it's dealing with, right? Correct? So I can actually, so it's essentially student counter, student CNT, right, will be set to get student info, right? A function can return one thing, correct? Student is one thing. It's a big thing, but it's one thing. I'm not passing two different things. It's one package that I'm returning out, correct? So let's do that. So instead of doing that, instead of doing these lines, I can just do that. How do I do it? Let's go to the header file. Uh, let's let me split the screen. So let's go to the analyzer. Let's see. I don't know what the function is going to be, so I'm going to say ho ha. Okay. I just want to. I copy and paste it though, so I don't want to lose it. Now I'm going to come back over here, get the name, copy, and put the name over here. It's definitely void, and it returns a. Oops, I don't have the header file. Let's include the header file here. Include uh, analyzer.h. So it's going to get me a student, oh, struct student mark, right? So take a look at this utilities. When I want to get an integer, what do I do? I create an integer and I return it, right? When I want to return an integer, what do I do? I create an integer and I return it, right? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say I have a st struct student mark. I'm going to create a st struct student mark. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to name it the same thing. And I'm just going to remove that index out of it so it becomes a single thing. So what does it do? Gets the name of the student, gets the student number, gets the mark, and at the end I'm going to say return st. Ta-da! So, and the prototype, I'll copy, and I put it in a header file. 
and a semicolon at the end. Save it. And that's it. Look how small and nice it looks like now. Right? Now, tricky thing. We said that when functions are pass getting something or passing something out, it's always a copy. Correct? Correct? Right? Now, my cell phone has a problem and I can't fix it, but she knows how to fix it. What do I do? I give my cell phone to her. Would you please get it? She fixes it and gives it back to me. She is a function. What did she receive? Cell phone. What did she return? Cell phone. To fix my cell phone, correct? What these lines of code are doing here? Modifying the rate, fixing the rate, correct? So I need to have a function, in this case, to update the rates for me, correct? So I'm going to say update uh, passing rates. And what do I pass to it? Struct passing rate. Let's, OK. Oh. I'm going to pass it, pass the rate to it, rate. But wait, remember, I gave her the cell phone. She fixed it and gave it back to me, right? When I give the rate to it, it's not going to get modified. I have to get it back and overwrite it. So I have to now put over here, rate is set to. So it gets the rate, modifies the values, and brings it back for me, OK? Again. I copy these. This time, I'm going to call it Niha and put those things in it. Come back over here, copy that, pass the struct. Ray, uh, passing rate. Let's call it rate. Sure. Uh, I don't want to call it the same name. Just for you to see if it had. It's. It doesn't have to be the same. So that's PR. Copy in here. I'm going to say PR, 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 and it returns the passing rate out. Correct? Are we OK? One problem over here. What is underlined red? What is it? It's a student, right? It's supposed to che check the rate, fix the rates based on a mark that is coming in, right? You have two choices. You can pass the whole student in there and let it check its mark, or you can pass student's mark in there. Always pass the smallest thing because it's cheaper. A student is four bytes integer, four bytes student marks, that eight bytes, 31 bytes the name, that's 39 bytes. So instead of 30 bytes, I can just send at uh, four. So in here, I'm going to create another integer mark. And simply remove that one, say, OK, get the mark and set it. Now, in here, what I'm going to do, let me put this thing in, a, in the header file. Save it. And when you look at this one, you can simply pass the SDCNT's mark. And voila. Look at the loop. See how small and nice and elegant it looks like. Now,
read this as if you have no idea what this program is doing. You're saying there is a loop. I am printing the row of the loop that I know. Then I'm getting the student information and put it in a student array. Then I get the student mark and add it to the sum. Then I update the passing rates based on the student mark. So my code is like a comment for itself when you choose the name of the functions properly. Not only that, it helps you procrastinate when you, when you code. Procrastination in coding is very good. It's not actually bad. Whenever you get to a point, you get to a point that says, I don't know what to do, imagine a function. Just make up a function. The function that doesn't even have an implementation, like I did, just write it and then drop it in some header file somewhere, in another file, and come back to it later. As you saw, I didn't put the student mark first, I just put the rate. Then I went over and I did it, oh my god, it needs a student mark too, so I passed that one. So you go back and forth and you fix it, and it becomes an easy, and easy, and easier, and easier. And that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, take a look at this one. Look at this big thing over here. What is this doing? Can anybody tell me what is that code doing? It prints the... <laughs> it prints the... <laughs> That's actually right. Very right. It is printing the... But it's not actually print this. It's printing... <laughs> right? <laughs> Correct? So what are these? Rows, right? Records. Records. Okay, good. But record rows. No, I can't do that. Um, Report row. The row of rep Okay. Again, whenever you, something gets complicated, just name it long. So print student record row. <laughs> okay. Now let me see what do I have in here to pass. So I have a student, student, student. They're all student, right? So I don't need to pass any details. I just pass a student and everything's going to get passed by it. What is this? It's the row, right? The row that is getting printed. Fine, I'll pass that one too. So let's do it. So I'm going to pass the row to it and pass the student to it. It's going to get the details. Student, student. Anything else in here that I missed? No. Do I need to return anything out of this? No, it's printing. It doesn't return anything, so it's just going to be void. Again, take it off, go back to the program. If it re resizes, it would be nice. Why, why it doesn't some? Let me shake it. There you go. All right. Ha, 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 whatever. I'm, I, I don't have any more names to put over there. And that's that one. Now I'm going to come back over here, print student row, copy it, put it over here. First, I am getting a row, so int row. So this one's going to get replaced by row. Then I'm getting a student struct, student mark, st. And it's not returning anything back. So, all I need to do is to take the indexes out, out, out. And this one. And this one. Am I missing anything? No. So that's that. Oh, thank you. Save it put the prototype inside the header file, semicolon, save, take a look at the code, much nicer. It's getting shorter and shorter as we go through it, right? 
So <clears throat> now that's line before and after. So let's put that one on over there. <clears throat> now let's take a look at this one. So I'm getting a rate, correct? Rate, 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 rate. I am getting a sum, a number of marks. It's actually a, a one thing. So it's actually uh, the, the, the average that I'm getting, right? So this is the average. It's not sum and number of marks. So it's the average. So I'm getting the rate and the average. Anything else I'm receiving here? No. So... What is it doing? It's printing what? Come on. Printing what? Print stats result. Okay, results, whatever. And what did I pass to it? I passed a rate and I passed an average. That is sum divided by number of marks correct so I'll copy this X come back over here shake it no nope. why is it sometimes coming there you go so I'll come back over here in analyzer <laughs> put it back in get the name Paste it over here. I am getting a rate, so struct, uh, passing rate, and I'm going to call it rate. I'm going to call it the same, same thing so I don't have to retype anything. It doesn't return anything. That is void. And I'm receiving an average, too. And the average is a double, so I'm going to go double. Average. Okay, so this is going to come over here. Average and average. And I think everything's good. I put this one in the header file again. Save it. Go back. Please stay. Please stay. There you go. Now I'm going to come back to the application and see what it looks like. Hmm, why the rate is getting that? Why the sum is getting that? Uh, one more time, correct me. Where is the rate? Rate is there. Oh, it's just neat. Okay, give me line number. I become deaf when somebody. Uh, 30, line number 30. Oh, yes, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Actually, let's fix that. I think rate should be first with respect to uh, logic. Because first rate is getting printed and then, and then the uh, thing, right? I, I can't even copy paste properly. Seriously, something's wrong with me. Of course, it's all your fault, but hey. All right. All right, so I think it's better now. Save everything. What did I do wrong now? Okay, nothing. All right. Let's look at this again. All right. So... There you go. Now, these things I don't need. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to copy that and put it in that program thingy that we created just to see how it's done. So you have the examples because that's not relevant to the application that we are writing. It's going to be confusing. Later, I'm going to see why did he... Why did he initialize these things? 
The only thing that needs to get initialized is the rates. Okay, so now take just just look how short is the program now. But there is of course one thing that I need to get rid of soon. Actually, from here to here. What is this doing? Hmm? It's printing the report, right? So I would like to have print, if I can type it, report. But I don't know how to pass an array into this now. That's for future. So these are supposed to actually go into one function called print report. So then my program becomes like this. Please enter your stuff. You get the student information. You print the report, and you're done. OK? And it becomes more elegant and nicer as it goes. So that's it. Functions, structures, all covered. All right? All you need to do is to come to test and get an A+. Any questions? Suggestions. Yes. Yes. And you have a quiz too, by the way, the day after tomorrow, on these. Okay, on structures and functions, you have a test, a uh, quiz, and then you have a test on the same thing. So it's kind of a, you know, warm up for the test. If there is no question, I'll stop recording. Any questions, one? Any questions, two?